Good morning, church. Good morning. Happy Lord's Day. This is a real blessed day, and I'm so happy to be here among you guys to worship you, with you. I am mindful that uh, the worship service has been great so far, and I, I'm really happy for Demetrius here. did a great job on the communion. That was his first time doing that, and I think he did a good job. They say give credit where credit is due. And then I give him credit for this. I appreciate him for his growth and everything that he's doing for the Lord. And I pray that we, he, the Lord will continue to bless him uh, doing, in his life. And I pray that he will bless each and every one of us. <laughs> you know, the Bible said today is the Lord's day and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the Lord's day and I will rejoice and be in it and glad in it. We should thank God because he has been merciful to us. And even though we are not meeting together person in person, we are meeting on the Zoom platform. The Bible says in John chapter 23 and in chapter 4, verse 23 and 24, but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. This means our hearts and our minds should be focused on the Lord. We are blessed to be able to use this Zoom platform to come together as one body. Even though we are many members in different locations, we are still the ecclesia, the called out body. Christians are the redeemed, washed and cleansed in the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible said in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them. One of the simplest form of worship is just two or three. But guess what? The Lord is in the midst of them. One of the simplest form of worship and service is, let me get back, is just being worshiping God. There has been time when Captain and I have been on vacation in remote areas where there wasn't a church of Christ to attend. So we worshiped together. Guess who was with us? The Lord was with us. One of the simplest form to worship God is by yourself. Guess who would be in the midst of you? The Lord. First Peter chapter two, verse nine and 10 says, but you are a chosen generation, a raw priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So what is my point? God will let the redeemed come before his throne of grace and worship him at any time and any place, as long as you worship him in, in spirit and in truth. But please don't get me wrong. The best way to worship God is to worship him in the house of the Lord. Now, we are not allowed to do that right, but I, right now, but I can't wait to get back to the building, to see you guys, to greet you guys, to, to do what we did before, but we realize life has changed. But nevertheless, it's a blessing to be able to come together as one body as we are doing now. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, come before your throne of grace to thank you for who you are, for what you have done for us in our lives and create us in your image. And you allow us to be able to come to you in worship because we believe in your son, Jesus Christ, and we are washed and cleansed of our sins and we can approach your throne of grace as individual priests, the holy nation that's presenting ourselves to you. We pray that our worship to you will be acceptable and pleasing at any time we come before you in any way and any method, as long as we worship in spirit and in truth. Brothers and sisters, amen. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. The title of this lesson is Discouraged Because of the Way. I don't have a Zoom presentation for you this evening or this morning, so I'm just gonna use my notes but uh, my lesson that I was presenting has changed throughout the week, and I'll get into that a little bit later. But it's the, it, the title is Discouraged Because of the Way. 
and please be with you. It's been a real tough week. Has there ever been a time in your life when you have been discouraged? For me, I can say yes, many times. Sometimes the road we travel is difficult and, you get, and it's a cause for discouragement. Everything don't go smoothly all the time. I think most of us can agree that some things in 2020 have been really discouraging. The way of life has changed drastically in the year 2020. This pandemic has taken a toll on the whole world. The sad thing about it is that the virus is not finished, it's still going on, it's still out there. Hundreds of wildfires are burning in California. Many people have lost their homes. Fires are still raging. Some of our members was close to evacuation. As they looked at the fire, they could have been discouraged seeing the fire coming up over the hill in different places. The Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean had twin hurricanes, some of the biggest ones that's known that's been documented. Laura, the hurricane that hit Texas and Louisiana and that area has been one of the largest hurricanes that's documented in 150 years. We just pray for everyone that was affected by that. And we pray that things will be cleaned up and people can come back to a normal part of their lives. I am going, I'm not going to say too much about the political environment, but it could get a little discouraging also. 2020 has been a time of uncovering. Things that are being uncovered is discouraging. Hatred and justice is being uncovered, which is discouraging. Brothers and sisters, I must admit that this week has been pretty tough for me. Some of the things that's been happening on and on and on are getting upsetting and, and discouraging. I must say, I am angry. Please pray for me. My mind is going through different things that I'm experiencing, and I have to hold on to the Lord's hand to get me through these things. There's an anger that is not sinful. That, that anger is sin. God can angry at sin. Another anger is anger at unrighteousness. And another anger is at evil. And another anger is at bigotry. Jesus, when he came into the temple and he saw the money exchangers there, he saw the desecration of the house of God and he saw the commercialism, he was angry. Jesus said, my father's house is not to be called a house of, my father's house is to be called a house of prayer and you have made it a den of thieves. He drove them out, he was angry. Again, Jesus came into the synagogue and on the Sabbath day, and there was a man with a slip of hand, and the Pharisees watched to see what he was going to do. He said to the man with the withered hand, stretch forth. And Jesus looked at the Pharisee and the crowd with anger. Jesus was angry because of the Pharisees through their bigotry and traditions. They would hold back the work of God because of them and because they wanted things to be done their way. And they couldn't see past themselves. Be angry and not sin. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. Ephesians 4, 26 and 27. Don't go to sleep holding grudges. It's apt to destroy you during the evening hours. Stay in, stay in God's word. Stay in prayer. Let go and let God. That's what will bring us the peace from all the discouragement that will come in our lives that we face. I've mentioned things don't always go smoothly. The children of Israel face discouragement and sin. So we don't sin when we get angry. The 
The scripture reading was taken from Numbers chapter 21, verse 4. But I'm going to read 21 through 4. Numbers 21, 4 through 9. We're all familiar with this story. Remember what I had said before. They journeyed, the children of Israel, from Mount Hort by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Eden. And the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. And people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and water, and our souls love loaves this worthless bread. So the Lord sent fiery serpents amongst the people, and they bit the people, and many people of Israel died. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned. For we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he will take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and put it on a pole. And it shall be that anyone is bitten when he looks at it shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And so it was, if anyone was bitten, he looked at the bond serpent and lived. God's path led, led Israel around Edom and not through it. He did not take them on the shortest route or the easiest road to the promised land. Instead, he took them on a road towards the Red Sea. They supposedly went north and across. They could could almost see the promised land. But they noticed that when God told them to turn around, they was going south because they couldn't go through Edom because the king of Edom wouldn't let them go through. So they went, they went south towards the Dead Sea, took them way, way out the way, and then they had to go back up. So they was basically backtracking their trail. And this made them really upset, and they was discouraged. And when the people realized that the landmarks that they saw was old print footprints in the sand, they were discouraged. Discouragement swept over them. Discouragement led them to impatient, and impatient led them to crankiness, and crankiness led them to rebellion. They was angry. Like their fourth fathers who died in the wilderness, they began to verbally attack God and Moses. They questioned God's holiness in leading them all those years. Their grumbling was a rejection of God's grace and solid plan. The path God had chosen was one they despaired. Verse 5 says, and the people spoke against God and Moses. The scriptures clearly admonish us to trust God's ways above our own especially when they lead us through the minefield of adversity. Proverbs chapter, I'm sorry, Psalms chapter one, verse six says, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Proverbs 14 says, number verse 12 says, it's a warning. There's a way that seems right to man, but his end is death. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 7 through 9, admonishes us. It says, the wicked forsake his way and the righteous man his faults. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And our God, for his will, he will abundantly pardon us. For my faults are not your faults, nor my ways, your ways says the Lord. For as high as the heavens are higher than, your, than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So sometimes we don't understand what's going on and we can't relate to it. But we have to rely on God's judgment and God's way. There's a way to seem right to man. We have to trust God. Verse 7 says, the people came to Moses and they said, we have sinned. For we have spoken against the Lord and against you. 
pray to the Lord that he take away the fiery serpent. By that time, the serpents was all over. They realized that they had sinned and they repented of their sins. That's what we need to do. Repent of our sins. The same person they spoke against, they asked him to pray for them to God. God was demonstrating his power and his providence for close to over 40 years to that group of people. Somehow they lost their way. We can't lose our way. We need to focus on God. No matter what we go through, focus on the Lord. He will take us. After they confessed their sin, Moses prayed for deliverance of his people. God did not take away the serpents, but God told Moses to make a bronze serpent and fasten it to a pole so that all could see and, if they, and they would live. Look at a little description of the serpent. The serpent was made out of bronze to represent judgment. The serpent represents evil, evil and the sting of death of the serpent. The, the sting of the serpent's death, I'm sorry, the sting of the serpent is death. The death on the pole is raised up for everyone to see. Moses told the people they must look at the bronze serpent if they want to live. They had to go to the bronze serpent to live. They had to make an effort to go to see the serpent. Now note that the serpent in the wilderness, in the desert with the hot sun, if you look at something that's shining in the distance, like the brass probably was shining, you wouldn't know what it is. Have you ever walked in a, a field or walked on the road and you've seen something shiny in the distance? You didn't know what it was until you walked up to it. As you were walking up to it, you was hoping that it would be something of value. But you had to go up to it just like these people of Israel had to go up to the serpent. They had to have faith to make the effort to go. So you have to go through to the serpent. The bronze serpent was a foreshadowing of the act of salvation of Jesus Christ on the cross, parallel there. I would like to go in that more deeper. I, have, I give a Bible class a couple of weeks from now, and I would like to go to this lesson to go into it more deeper. So it, it, it's, it's a really interesting contrast that we have there. Jesus came to bring judgment to the world. The only way man can live is to look to the one who took upon himself in the likeness of man and was lifted up on the cross to take away the sting of death upon himself. If we look to Jesus Christ, we shall live, but we must look to him on his terms. John chapter three, verse 14 to five says, and Jesus said, and, uh, and Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, the Son of Man must be lifted up. Who shall ever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men to me. John 12, 32. Jesus had to be lifted up in order to save humanity, in order to save you and to save me from this corrupt and wicked world and from our sins. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, 27 through 30, all things has been delivered to me by my father and no one knows the son except the father. No one knows, no one does know the father except the son and the one whom the son wills to reveal. Jesus know the Father, Jesus, the Father know the Son. In order to know the Father and, and have a relationship with him, you have to go through Jesus and Jesus has to reveal you to the Father through the obedience of the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Son, Jesus Christ. To continue on that verse right there, Jesus says that come to me all you who labor in the heavy labor, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, 
and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. So we have to make an effort to come to Jesus and learn of him. Just like the children of Israel had to approach that bronze serpent in the desert. Make that effort there to learn. When you learn, you react. Learning is bringing knowledge and information that you need in life. Brothers and sisters, there's sometimes we travel down the road of life that might get a little discouraging. Things might not be going the way that we expect to go. I was hoping that this lesson would be a little more encouraging as I started off with the lesson, but so much has been going on these last week last week that this caused me to, as Rex would say, go down a rabbit hole. <laughs> There's so much information in, in, in Numbers chapter 21 and all the verses that I said, it just had me going all over the place. And then my feelings and my emotions got involved. But as I lean on God's hand, and I hope that all of us do, that we can see the strength that we can gain from him and it could reach our hearts and our minds and we can make a difference towards each other and towards the Lord. Some things happen by our own doing. We do it ourselves and we get in trouble. Some things happen or that are not by our doing and we have to deal with that. God will lead us by his way and we must understand his ways and don't go against God. Remember what God said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as high are the heaven, or higher as the, higher as the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than yours. The, war, the whole world is going through the wilderness of the COVID-19. Some of us might be going through the wilderness the wilderness of discouragement. Some of us might be going through the wilderness of health problems. Some of us might be going through the wilderness of unemployment. Some of us might be going through the wilderness of drug and alcohol recovery. Some of us might be mourning the loss of a loved one. All of us in some type of wilderness. We are in our own personal wilderness. But we need to look to Jesus to take care of us. There's a song that says, God will take care of you. Goes echo and echo in my mind to give me stability in my life, to give me courage to keep on moving on and, and facing the things that I face in my life. I know God will not give up on me. And I know he's not gonna give up on us. He always have a way to bring us to the point in our life where we can see him working. You open up your eyes, you can see him there. He has blessed us with so many things in our life and we need to recognize that. Rebellion against God, we will lose. God has blessed us and he has sent our son, Jesus Christ, into this world to be that yoke that we need to attach ourselves to so we can make through the struggles that we might have in our life. Brothers and sisters, I thank you for your time and your ears. Like I said, I want it to be more of a positive message, but I hope it was. You got something out of it. But as we go on, we must remember that the Lord is our shepherd. We share not walk. He make us, make us lay down in green pastures. He restores our soul. He leads us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, I should not fear no evil, for you are with me and your rod that comfort me. You prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemy, and my cup runneth over. And surely I should dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Very Derek version of quoting the scripture. But you understand what I'm saying, Psalms 23, and that's what needs to be embedded in our mind. Learn of the Lord, he will take care of us. The invitation is for those, just like Jesus said, to come to him who are weary and heavy laden, and he will give you rest.
to take his yoke upon you and learn from him. So hopefully we have learned something today that calls us to look at Jesus and calls us to realize who he is and how he can get us out of the predicament and out of the mess in our life. The big mess that we have in our life is sin. And Jesus can wash that sin away through baptism. We might be angry. We can wash that anger away, but it still is present when something else come up. Or we can look to Jesus for peace. We can have sweet rest at nighttime and give it to him. If you would like to become a member of the body of Christ, you can be washed and cleansed in water baptism. Thank you for your patience and your understanding. And please pray for me as I pray for you. Thank you for your ears. <laughs>